Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. My guest today is Dr. Robert Lopez, who we have interviewed in the past when he was discharged by a secular university in California. He's now had the same thing happen to him at a Baptist seminary in Texas. I seem to recall having interviewed you some time ago when you made a move from one institution to another institution, and now it seems that you've been booted from both the institutions that have come up as topic that, <laughs> yes. that you and I have spoken <laughs> spoken about. This I know. Is, well, it's, the, the, you could call it Groundhog's Day, or you could just say, I, I, I prove you can be struck by lightning twice. Yeah, well, I've heard of people, yeah. the occasional, very occasional, by the numbers anyway, people getting struck by lightning, and you seem to have a have a talent for drawing the current from the heavens, but since you're a believer, I'm, yes. I'm not worried about your eternal salvation because that question's already been taken care of. But it seems in the meantime here on earth, you seem to be having difficult, difficulty, or perhaps it would be fairer to say that other people have take issues with you. And so right. I'd like to discuss where your faith is taking you and why you believe people seem to have a problem with someone who's a faithful believer in Jesus Christ. Well, I left California because it was too liberal, so I came to a Christian conservative seminary, <clears throat> and I can't say that I have been fired. I was, I was fired on November 29th, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, they told me that my position was eliminated and it was a layoff, but of course I had been called in and threatened with termination and told to resign because they wanted me to cease and desist from discussing uh, homosexuality and same-sex sex abuse. That is a lot of what I had been doing in the public square, and there were repeated uh, attempts to pressure me into stopping that ministry and going silent on it, um, and I had resisted that pressure. I had tried to follow all of the rules. You know, they said everything had to be, any statement that I made or any publication had to be pre-approved by all of these very bureaucratic offices, and I had tried to go along and follow the process every step of the way, and finally... In September, my dean told me, look, uh, this is, it's not really the process. They don't want you to discuss this issue at all while you're working here, and if you continue to do it, your job's going to be in jeopardy. I said, I'm, I'm not going to resign, and then I was brought to the provost, and the provost uh, basically said, um, you know, it's not the content. He claimed it wasn't the content. He just wanted me to have these offices approve everything, you know, even any kind of statement made out there on social media before I could even send it to editors. And I said, this is a level of control that's unacceptable. And I, I can't, I can comply with everything but this. I cannot, this is a line I won't cross. Um, he told me I should resign. I said I wouldn't. And then I was terminated two months later. Now, it seems to me as one who's passed through the academic life, at least to the point of obtaining a Bachelor of Arts degree, that <laughs> ironically, institutions which are often seen uh, from people outside of academia as places where presumably, as the schools themselves say, this is a, a free marketplace where people can joust with each other and discuss matters and debate matters and maybe shake hands afterwards. In the um, first portion of the 21st century, it seems that's not the case. In fact, it seems that there's a greater level of mind control or at least... Um, discussion control than, than I might have anticipated based on my own past experience? Well, I will tell you that both liberal and conservative colleges don't live up to their own standards. Liberal conservative colleges are obviously not liberal because they don't let a multiplicity of opinions exist. They, they tout one party line, they punish dissent. And uh, conservative Christian colleges also do not live up to their values because they don't really allow you to share your Christian witness if it shakes up the wrong people. So my, my resolution on sex abuse and our need to invalidate non-disclosure agreements, that, I think, rattled a lot of cages. Because, you know, they didn't want, people don't want their friends being uh, accused or exposed or, you know, uh, having to deal with uncomfortable things going on in their churches. They would rather live in silence. And I always say, uh, discretion is not a biblical value. Um, you know, so uh, I think both sides of the higher ed spectrum, you know, are they both fail to live up to their own standards, and that is very sad. We hear from young people who've been abused that oftentimes the reason why they didn't speak up earlier than they did or that someone didn't find out through a fortuitous circumstance that someone was abusing a young person, that the young person will say, he told me if I ever told anybody 
I'd be in big trouble. No one would believe me, or uh, if they didn't believe me, then 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 the abuser would punish the the victim even more so because they spoke up. Does it not strike you that in an I instance like yours where you are told not to talk about things, that that is exactly the right fertile ground for things worse than the present? Yeah. To, to happen how, exactly because it's undercover? That's how abuse proliferates. And, and, you know, and right now, as the Southern Baptist Convention is grappling with all of its sex abuse crisis, and they have not even scratched the surface of the same sex sex abuse crisis, which is rampant. I know that for a fact in the Southern Baptist Convention. The fact that I come forward as a sex abuse survivor and I, I share my testimony to help other men who have been through that, and they are telling me that my sharing of that testimony brings unwanted attention to the seminary and doesn't represent the institution well. That's part of the problem. This is all part of the cover-up, and this is what allows the abuse to proliferate because there is silence, and in darkness evil can proliferate. You, you need the light, but, you know, they, I think that they have decided that um, they're, they're, they want to open their doors to some of the darkness out there. They want that darkness to be welcomed into the seminary and into the Baptist churches, and unfortunately darkness and light cannot coexist, so you have to kick out the light if you want to welcome the darkness. Refresh my memory and those of my listeners here in Connecticut and Western Massachusetts for a moment. What what did what position did you hold out in California, and in general terms, what kind of a philosophical attitude toward life and 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 teaching did that institution represent? Well, I was a, an associate professor of English. They really approached things from a liberal uh, point of view. They were very left leaning in terms of the the types of assignments and readings that they gave to the students. I held out and really fought for the classics while I was there. Um, but that's what I taught there. And then when I came to the seminary here, I was a professor of humanities. I was a full professor teaching the classics and teaching all of the conservative texts I loved. Uh, but, um, you know, there was not as much support, let's say, for the multicultural work that I did when I got to Texas. So, Would it be safe to say that, that due to your experience at this point now in your life that that those two institutions somewhat, on the surface at least, coming from different perspectives, nonetheless managed to manage you in very similar ways? I think that, the, to be honest with you, the, the Christian education world was worse. Oh, really? It was, yeah. It was far worse because I think the Southern Baptist Convention is leaning towards this elder-led model of churches, which is very authoritarian, where you know they, they really abuse First Peter and Romans 13 and Ephesians uh, 5 or, and 6. So they, they come with these from those scriptures, and they say that we have to just totally obey the elders, and we can't question them. And because they are elders, that means that God appointed them there, and they're infallible. Or, I mean, the implication is that they're infallible. They would never say that overtly. But I see that trend uh, definitely in the Southern Baptist world, and I think it has come to the, to the colleges, to the Baptist colleges, and I, I, that was a much more authoritarian experience than I had in California, where, uh, I mean, it just they didn't even feel the need to give me a written policy. They would just change the rules every time they called me in for a meeting and, and chastise me for breaking rules that they had never given me. And they would never put anything in writing, and everything was very secret. And then, you know, when they fired me and I sent out the press release, about why I had been fired. Then they released a statement that lied about me. They said that I had made it up and that no one had ever told me not to discuss homosexuality. So then I gave the audio tapes because I, I recorded the meetings. And so now I was able to vindicate myself, but it's a horrible experience to have the, the college release really, really harsh false statements about me, making me look like a liar. And that's something that, that they never did in California. I, nothing like that ever happened in California. Dr. Robert Lopez has been my guest on today's WIHS Journal. We'll complete his story on tomorrow's broadcast. Call us at 860-346-1049 for information. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from WIHS, Middletown.